Good morning, folks. We're watching the umbral magnetic fields of incoming active regions. We will see the sunspots by the weekend. Let's run through the top news of the last day, starting at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day in our star, coronal holes departing on the south, couple bright points, but no solar flares, and no chance for flares until that active region arrives over the left side. Solar wind is the story right now. A sharp rise in telemetry occurred last night as the stream intensified due to the coronal holes. We hit the plateau just over 500 kilometers per second, a medium stream, and so geomagnetic conditions showed only a minor instability overnight, waning this morning. Moving next to the weather, tornadoes continued to ravage the United States. It was the center of the country hit hardest yesterday. This is the damage in Kansas. Let's take a look at how the storm unfolded using GOES-16. As the day wore on, the energy release on approach and through sunset drove these storms as filaments off the convergence line. You will see how the energy increased and view the lightning evidence as the storms broke out in the plains. We need to look at the next day of storm forecasts as well, because it's coming again tonight. All eyes open in the affected regions, especially Arkansas, where record flooding is already taking place. Speaking of that, Maldives got more of the monsoon flow than it bargained for, this should already be way up into India and feeding China by now. Eyes on it if you live in the east. Folks, this is the near-Earth object list at Tony Phillips' blog. Tons of talk this week about the mile-wide asteroid that came by, but really, not really that close, at more than 10 times the distance of the moon. The red-painted closer ones at less than 10 lunar distances are common, and the ones that interest me are the ones that come closer than the moon. Let's take a peek at that one on the list, which came by undiscovered and was added to the list here once it flew by. Those are the ones I worry about, by the way, the ones we don't know about and don't make the list until after they've arrived. As you watch this close one miss Earth to the north, remember that the large fireballs we hear about online, including the Russian one in 2013, were not on the NEO list before they entered the atmosphere, and so we never really fret about the ones they try to scare you about in the news. Now we really get going. The Solar Physics Journal has dropped a bomb. This has much been suspected for centuries, dozens to hundreds of articles and books, and back when they were scripts, a whole chapter in our first book, Observing the Frontier from 2015, Venus, Earth, and Jupiter Control the Solar Cycle. This is so critical because it is the dagger lingering over the solar dynamo theory, one that restrains the activity potential of our star and obfuscates its few nature. When the dynamo falls, the real knowledge begins. The spheres are connected. There is a great paper out on magnetohydrodynamic action of solar wind at distance leaving the sun. You can see the stream segmenting into its sectors, and I want everyone to try to picture similar activity at galactic levels as well. Up next... We're going to Fornax, a terrific cluster of galaxies about 60 million light years away. Astronomers believe they have found two stars that were deported from those galaxies. You can read the X-ray study from Chandra at the link below. Up next, supernova. And this study is fascinating for two reasons. First, the concept that nova drove hardships on Earth that caused us to walk upright is an idea that most observers could likely get behind given the physics potential of a rare cyclical solar micronova causing Earth's catastrophe cycle but how it was said to occur is probably the best part. The nova injected cosmic rays and electrons into the Earth system, which triggered increases in lightning, global wildfires, and the stress on the environment that drove humans to become humans. Of course, this is the mechanism by which space weather is claimed to control the weather, the injection of energetic particles. This has never been part of any official climate model, by the way, and despite the fact that they are now allowed to be used in those studies, as veteran observers know thus far, they have presented too scary a proposition for global warming scientists to even try so far. Lastly, on the news front. One manifestation of dark matter delusion would be those mega-massive particles we've seen hypothesized recently. Another one you can see here. A signal not fully understood in a radio galaxy so far away it's astounding is giving these few dark matter seekers hope. The issue is that we understand very little about space, those radio galaxies, the plasma interactions, and the signals coming from them. The concept of the study doesn't really become delusional until you remember that they have to look beyond our local system, our local galaxy, our local cluster, beyond our time in the universe, and are reaching at something. They'd be able to see these kinds of interactions very easily, much closer if it was truly a dark matter signal.
Want more on those electrons from space and Earth's weather? How about their effect on earthquakes, volcanoes, technology, human health, weatherman's guide to the sun, student favorite textbook by course evaluations, only at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.